Hey guys, Dark Humility here. You can always catch me at twitch.tv forward slash Dark Humility for six to seven days a week of Diablo 2 action. D2R, PD2, we go hard on each of them around their respective ladders. And D2R ladder reset, the first one ever, is coming up on April 28th, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We are ready. I'm going to be trying to go to 99 on a hardcore sorceress that's gonna be a ton of fun and you can join us there for that you can always catch the rest of my guides including this one on my youtube under the d2r guide section or a pd2 if you're into project diablo 2 and you can catch them on maxwell at d2.maxwell.gg including the written guide for this guide that we're about to make here today um, d2.maxwell.gg has Every bit of Diablo 2 information pre presented in a nice, easy to read format. Um, the highest quality information by the very best players. And um, also has a D2 planner where you can plan out your characters with items and everything else of that nature. So, today, guys, let's get into it. Today, we will be creating a guide for the Fissure Druid Patch 2.4 Fissure Druid. The updated version, the one that is a monster with zero global cooldowns, which is the headline there. Um, no cooldowns means he can just spam all of his abilities. He's an overall A tier build, um, not being quite one of the very top density destroyers in the game, but being a solid one and also being able to clear elites very effectively as well. He destroys all kinds of farming areas and all kinds of things in general. Um, what we're going to be showing you today uh, and demoing today is a character that I found myself on my old patch 1.13c grail that I have ported over to D2R in patch 2.4. Um, and uh, we'll be demoing that, of course. Um, we will be going over his stats, his skills, his gear, the mercenary gear, and demos in both player 7 and players one to see all of in his best areas just to see what he really truly is capable of. We'll even show him off in his worst area, the Chaos Sanctuary, to show you that he's not just all about fire damage. This character is a beast. Uh, Fissure Druid is the strongest starting, um, starting strategy for when you create a Druid in terms of just playing through the game until you get to about uh, the end of Act 3 Nightmare. So yeah, he is a monster. Uh, let's get into it though. Stop talking about him. Uh, we got a level 95 druid here. Let's get into the stats and whatnot. So yeah, we'll go in order and we'll uh, hopefully explain as much as we possibly can as succinctly as possible. Okay, so we get enough strength to wear our gear. That's pretty much all you want. Um, highest strength requiring item is a phoenix in this case. Dex, you're usually not going to have to put any points into dex if you have an ante and a torch. But just put in enough to make sure there's enough to wear your gear in general. Uh, vitality, you just dump the rest of your points of vitality, and you don't put any points into energy. Pretty simple um, on the overall stats. Uh, for the res, uh, you should be looking to get as high of res as possible in hell. Um, Phoenix actually allows you to have more maximum lightning res and more maximum fire res, so you can even get upwards of 85 fire res here. Uh, but in general, you just want decent res on hardcore. You're going to definitely want to make sure that you have max res hardcore. It's very important that you stack as much res as possible, even beyond the maximums, if you can. Um, all right. And then we have damage reduction, um, you know, just uh, from the Enigma. Don't need a ton of damage reduction. Once again, unless you're playing hardcore, uh, it just depends on the situation. Just standard build, though, will not need that, which is what, what we'll be demoing here today. Um, and then of course we have magic find, we have gold find, uh, you're going to want to probably about over 200 magic find. The gold find stat isn't very important. Um, let's see here. Experience that's from the Annie. It's always a good stat. Life after each kill on Enigma is really big because you kill a lot of monsters very quickly. So it's good for refilling your life, but so is the redemption aura from Phoenix. So it's not too big of a deal on this build. Um, you're gonna want at least, at least to hit the 29% faster hit recovery breakpoint on a druid, if you can. Um, if not, it's okay. But um, since you're gonna be teleporting, and especially if you're jumping into monsters, 
Um, druids don't have the best hit recovery frames, so you got to make sure that you can get out if you teleport with something bad. And then 99 fast for hit recovery. Um, that's why I recommend on the standard build, uh, you can get upwards of a, uh, you can hit the 163% faster hit uh, cast rate breakpoint. You can go to the 99 faster cast rate breakpoint. Um, even the 63, uh, I think it's the 63. Oh, that's it. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm not sure 100%. Um, it is on my written Maxwell guide though. Uh, you can hit that breakpoint as well, and it'll be decent, but you really want to try to hit 99 if you can. And then negative enemy fires in damage and plus skills. Damage is everything. You want really high damage, um, you want a lot of plus skills, and you want a lot of negative to enemy fire resistance. Um, the more you can break the monster's fire resistance, in general, the more damage you will do. Um, of course, lowering their physical resistance will help when you're against fire immunes, which is something we'll demo later on here. And that's pretty much it for the stats. Um, before we enter the skills, I'd like just to mention that we will um, have uh, all of the timestamps for all of the different sections of this guide in the first pinned comment below and in the description. And you can also catch the full written guide, including seven build variants for the 2.4 Fire Druid who has just been completely unleashed um, in the Maxwell guide itself, d2.maxwell.gg forward slash guides forward slash fissure dash druid to check that out. Um, he is a fire druid though, not just fissure. He uses all kinds of skills and we will be demoing that of course once we uh, get into the demo once again. All right, let's go over the skills. So the skills for this build, the standard version, are actually very simple. It used to be a little more complicated when Hurricane was connected to Armageddon, but that is no longer the case. Now, all you really want to do is uh, make sure you have Fissured maxed out, um, and then max out its synergies, Firestorm, and then Volcano in that order, and you max out Molten Boulder, and then you max out Armageddon. Of course, before you max at Armageddon or max out the rest of these, also make sure you have at least one point into Oak Sage, and then you have one point all the way down into Summon Grizzly. At level 95, if you have one point to Summon Grizzly, you have two extra points into Oak Sage, you can have maxed out all the way through Armageddon, and you can just put the remaining points into the Oak Sage. If you're playing hardcore, instead of Armageddon, I recommend dumping all your points into Oak Sage so you have a strong, reliable Oak Sage that doesn't die and that provides you with the maximum amount of life possible. So that's pretty much it for this. Um, it made it really simple. Um, now you might be asking, Dark Humility, why max out Armageddon? Before, you would recommend maxing out Oak even on softcore. And the reason is, is Armageddon now does much more reliable damage um, it is still random kind of where it hits, but the AOE is much bigger on each hit, and it's much more frequent. So they hit much more often, and uh, it actually contributes quite significantly to your DPS now. Uh, it's not like, you know, insanely reliable, which is why you still want to max it last, but it's way more reliable than it ever was, and it actually feels like it's doing something now. So all of these skills will contribute greatly to your damage. Um, Armageddon does physical damage as well as fire, so does Volcano, and so does Molten Boulder, Fissure, and Firestorm just do fire damage. Fissure, however, in most cases is going to be the vast majority of your damage, and that's going to be very important stuff. Alright, let's go into our own gear here. Um, let's check it out here. Um, actually, you know what, let's go into our mercenary gear first. The mercenary is a bit simpler. So the mercenary in general, you want to get an Act 2 mercenary in the late game at least, uh, once you can afford it, uh, and get a Might mercenary. You might ask, why not Holy Freeze, something that might be a little bit more defensive. You could do that, um, but the problem is that a slower monster doesn't run through Fissure as much and won't um, proc as many Fissure ticks, and won't run into the Fissure as quickly, and overall is going to lower your DPS. You don't want to freeze the monsters if possible. Um, Act 2 in general will usually be the best approach no matter what though. If you can only afford an Insight, you can put that on. But if not, uh, you're going to want Infinity. 
Infinity, of course, with Might is going to allow your Mercenary to do a ton of damage, which can allow him to help you kill Immunes or monsters that are in general pretty difficult to deal with. Um, against both Fire and Physical Immunes, you might still have problems, but um, with a, a Might or a Mercenary plus Infinity, you can break most Fire Immunes at the very least, and the Mercenary can take care of any that are um, still Fire Immune, at least as long as they're not Fire and Physical Immune. Um, Giant Thresher is one of the best bases, it's one of the fastest bases, you can also just make it in a Thresher though, and it's also a super fast base, but honestly, uh, you can make it in any Elite Ethereal base, um, the slower bases just are slower, and uh, yeah, they don't hit as often, which means the Mercenary can't proc as many Crushing Blows, uh, so it's not as good for like higher player count, also means it's not going to leech as much, but it does more damage, so there's more advantages, there's advantages in terms of him one-shotting monsters maybe in lower player count with higher damage bases um, but in higher player count where survivability and life leech is more important and then um, chunking monsters down with crushing blow you're definitely going to want the faster bases this build definitely in my opinion is built for high player count his best role is density just destroying in diablo 2 so i would i would prefer the faster bases if i were you uh, Fortitude is just really strong, really makes his damage really pop, um, and uh, gives him just a lot of defensive capability, a lot of defense, life, and everything else. It's pretty standard on in the Infinity to wear Fortitude, and then also an Andy, so he also has more attack speed. Um, if you put an attack speed fire as Jewel in there, he will also have max fire as, and he will um, hit another attack speed frame with a Thresher or a Giant Thresher at 22 attack speed. Um, uh, since Andy only has 20 default, getting that uh, attack speed jewel will allow him to hit another attack speed frame, and he'll hit even faster. It just makes him even stronger. Um, of course, you can wear like Treachery, Vampire Gaze, there's all kinds of options you can wear. Um, Crown of Thieves, and as long as you have a combination of life, uh, high defense, weapon damage, resistances is the really big thing on a mercenary, and um, attack speed and all that things of that nature uh, your mercenary is going to be really strong all right let's get into our own gear so on our own gear here we have a heart of the oak um, this is for skills and faster cast rate now, other very prominent options are um, for a weapon would just be to throw facets or a combination of fire facets and istrins you won't get as much cast rate though which means for teleport mobility you're going to lose a lot of teleport mobility and also the initial cast speed when you cast abilities which really doesn't matter too much uh, because they're all based on uh, cooldowns uh, almost all of your abilities are cooldown based except for armageddon now which you can cast as much as you want um, but i mean it doesn't really matter it just resets the armageddon at any rate uh, your main goal though is to get plus skills on your weapon i mean there's cheaper options like earth shaker and spirit and leaf of course earlier on um, but your main goal is to get plus skills or negative enemy fire is from facets. The negative enemy fire is, is the really big thing. Percent fire damage also does a lot as well. And uh, you can also, even on hardcore, you can use a phoenix here instead of on your shield so that you can wear a storm shield and make yourself super tanky while having redemption or and even more negative enemy fire is. So a lot of good options in general, but on the standard build, I recommend Hodo. I also recommend Ravenlore. Uh, Raven Lore is definitely a pretty rare item. Um, it is the way you get the most amount of negative enemy fire resistance possible on the helm. That stat, once again, is usually the most important stat you can have on this build, unless you're focusing on your physical damage, like on Bolt and Boulder. Um, another very good option, of course, though, is Flickering Flame, which you can put in a Druid Helm, which can have additional plus skills on top of that. So you can actually get more plus skills with Flickering Flame, but Flickering Flame uh, maxes out at negative 10 less fire res than Raven Lore. Raven Lore also gives you 21 all res instead of just focusing on your fire res like Flickering Flame. And in general, usually you want to play this build in areas um, that do, where there's monsters that don't do fire damage. So Flickering Flame doesn't really improve your survivability all that much. Um, at least in most cases, but I, I prefer Raven Lore like 9 times out of 10 on this build. But like I said, there's definitely reasons to use Flickering Flame, and if you get a really good base for it, 
uh, go for it. Flickering Flame is nearly as good in some ways, and with the plus skills, it might be better in other ways, especially if you're focusing on physical damage. Of course, there's always cheaper options like Shaco with a Fire Facet. Um, Crown of Ages uh, could be used as well for uh, more DR, and you can put two Fire Facets in it if you want, or other things. Uh, there's definitely a lot of things you can do, though. Uh, Lore is, like, really, really cheap. Uh, we'll be demoing, of course, the starter version of this build as well, so we'll show you guys uh, kind of, like, everything you can expect on that build as well. All right, and then, of course, uh, Caster Amulet. So this is where I recommend you probably should get your faster cast rate. Um, getting 99 faster cast rate is tough with Phoenix, um, but hitting 19 faster cast rate on an amulet or 9 faster cast rate Rate on a crafter amulet is really good for this purpose. Of course, you can also just wear a Mars, and then you can go um, FCR rings. Uh, Mars is also going to be very solid on this build. Uh, of course, so will a three elemental skill uh, amulet. So there's a lot of different options here. And uh, three elemental skills with MF or life or anything like that will increase your damage even further. So there's definitely um, a lot of pretty solid options. I'd recommend this though. This helps us hit our 99 faster cast rate breakpoint. It is still getting us some plus skills. Um, so it's very good stuff. All right, Phoenix. Phoenix, I consider this best in slot in general. Um, since you're going to be teleporting around and taking a lot of damage in some cases, uh, even with uh, you being able to cast spirit wolves and everything from your one pointers to the summon tree, uh, you're still going to be taking a decent amount of damage. So I recommend having the re the, uh, the regen, the mana regen, and the life regen from Redemption Auras is huge. And then it's also the way to get the most amount of negative enemy fire resistance possible. Now you can also just wear a 2020 fire shield if you don't want the, um, the quality of life sustained from the Redemption Aura uh, or the life or whatnot. But this is just a really solid option. And of course, it has gives you maximum light and maximum fire is, which makes you even tankier in areas like Worldstone Keep or Chaos or anything, and fire absorb. So this character has like no fire as problems. Imagine having Phoenix on top of Flicker and Flame as well. You get like uh, maximum fire is on top of maximum fire is on top of tons of fire is on tops of fire absorb. So, and and the crazy thing is once again you don't farm a lot of areas with tons of fire damage to begin with. So you're, you're, you're pretty much set on fire when um, you're in this build in general in terms of surviving fire damage and dealing it. Uh, but if you wear a faceted, a fire faceted 2020 shield, you can uh, maybe get a little bit more damage in some cases, but against highly fire resistant or fire immune monsters, you will lose damage. Uh, the infinity, of course, will break a lot of fire immunes, not all of them. And if you can break them, all of this negative enemy fire is will further reduce the resistances. So the, um, if the monster is fire immune, for instance, and has maybe like 110 fire resistance, uh, Infinity will normally drop a monster's fire resistance by 85, and if they're immune, it'll be a fifth of that, so it'll be 17. Um, and then their resistance will drop down to uh, 93 if they have 110 fire resistance in this example. Well, 93 is still a lot, but if you have this negative enemy fire is on top of that, uh, a lot more of your damage is getting through. I mean, it drops into the 60s, and then it drops further to the 30s and 40s with more negative enemy fire is. And imagine having a faceted sword. You can make their resistance zero after being immune. And uh, since, since a lot of the fire druid's damage is tick damage and damage that kind of accrues over time, uh, it's... More important than plus skills is having negative enemy fire is so that the full force of that damage is constantly going through. Alright. Another thing that's important here in this build is Enigma. So Enigma, teleport, mobility, um, it's just really good for efficient farming. It's just the best way to efficiently farm on this build, period. Um, there's definitely other things you can use like earlier on when you're starting out, like Scolders, uh, Smoke, Wealth, uh, Perfect topaz, uh, perfect topaz armor. You can also use like a perfect topaz helm if you're just trying to magic find some areas like Eldritch and Shank and Cavs early on. But this really gives you everything you could possibly want: um, mobility plus skills, magic find, strength, and life after each kill, which adds to your life sustain. Um, it's just pretty crazy stuff.
overall a very very powerful and safe approach there um, you're also going to want war travelers if possible or some kind of magic find res boots um, on hardcore you're definitely going to want to pound that res focus res focus res so on hardcore you might want tri res boots or a dual res boots mf over these but um you know it's kind of difficult to fit a lot of mf on this build sometimes i like you see with this setup the standard setup here it's pretty standard stuff getting around 200 so, I mean, you can always sacrifice some LEGCs for more magic find, but more magic find is never a bad thing um, if you want to get those unique set rare and blue items. Of course, we have Mage Fist. So this is a double upgraded Mage Fist. You don't have to do that, but that's how you get maximum defense on it. Defense isn't super important on this build, though. And um, on this one, you're just going to want... Uh, it just gives you one to fire skills. So it's pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, it's the best way to get damage. You can, of course, go for more magic find if you want, but to get that 99 faster cast rate with all the rest of our gear here, it really makes sense to use this for the skill and the extra faster cast rate. I wouldn't use train gloves or anything because you really want that extra skill, so it's just a lot easier to get Mage Fist. Um, it's pretty much a no-brainer on the gloves. You almost always want to use Mage Fist, even on a starter build if you can find them. And then um, uh, plus skills, Stone of Jordans, Mana... Mana is really good for uh, sustaining your teleport. It's um, just going to be really good stuff in general. It's going to really add to your damage. Uh, if you don't have an amulet like this, though, you're going to need faster cast rate rings instead. You're going to have to use like a Mars or an Ellie amulet. Um, and of course, to round out the rest of our 99 faster cast rate, 20, 20, 40, and 19, you're going to want your Ratnid's Mesh. It also gives you a plus skill as well and more mana. Very good stuff. Uh, plus skills, negative enemy fires is the name of the game, with negative enemy fires being the priority on this build because of how the damage works on the build. Once again. Alright, so we got Call of Arms though. Call of Arms. Um, got a 6 Battle Orders one, but just any Call of Arms you can. It's just a huge, massive buff to life and health. Uh, sorry, life and mana. Um, so there really isn't anything else you'd really want to do in this case, but yeah, I mean, that, that's definitely what you want to do. And then, of course, you have an Ethereal Spirit here as well. So there's two skills on Spirit to further boost your battle orders. And then, uh, Geed's just best in slot in terms of, like, maximizing how much MF you can get out of three slots in your inventory. And then you're going to want as many LE skillers as possible if you want to max out your damage. However, depending on the player count, depending on the situation, you might just want to go a lot heavier on the Magic Find. Um, but in general, this character just clears tons of monsters insanely quickly on high player count. So just going for damage is going to be good, especially when we demo him in high player count, which is going to be most of the demos here. Um, one thing that we're going to want to use for uh, Bale Waves, especially Bale Wave 4 and 5, is a lower resist one. If you use a lower resist one on top of the Conviction Aura from Infinity, you can actually break Wave 5's fire immunity and you can kill wave five pretty quickly. Um, uh, it, it might still take a little while, but uh, it's definitely, and like especially in lower player count, you can definitely do it and you can actually get some damage out. Um, yeah, it's really, really good stuff. Really, really good stuff to do that. And uh, it's a really good way to play that. A lot of people might think this character can't do bill waves because of the fire means at the end, but it can. There's definitely a way to do that demoing that here and then of course torch annie uh pretty standard stuff if you can uh just having a druid torch three skills another skill res uh attributes just these are too good best in slot if you can get them and then this is where all our hit recovery is uh we could definitely have hit recovery instead of life up here ideally you'd have like max life or whatever but uh, you can have 12 fhr legcs um but this is where all our hit recovery is in this case so we got 30 hit recovery here. I mean, you could also have 10 on your boots. That's definitely a pretty easy place to get it. Um, that's how we're getting our 29 hit recovery, though. Recommend having at least 29 for smoother gameplay. And then uh, res MF. Perfect. All right, so he's a well-balanced character. This is a well-balanced build. Um, he is a beast. Yeah, you can have life res. It just depends on um, hardcore. So in hardcore, you definitely want to focus more on life and res and MF. Magic Find always takes a backseat to uh, Res and MF on Hardcore. So does Damage to some extent. Uh, 
wearing a storm shield and going max block and using a phoenix on your main hand, for instance, or um, just a fasted sword or whatever, just to get that max block with higher damage reduction, focusing damage reduction um, in places like your belt, um, and sacrificing some faster cast rate, going down into the, uh, I think it's the 63 frame once again, in the cast rate. Uh, definitely like, you know, not the worst thing in the world if you're on hardcore and uh, you can't feed your FCR elsewhere. Heck, you could even go down to the 40s for the 40 cast rate breakpoint as well. Or not not exactly 40, but in the 40s. Uh, you can check out, of course, the breakpoints on the written guide uh, on Max Roll if you guys want to know, of course, how you can mix and match your build in every different which way. And, of course, there's seven build variants for that as well, once again. All right, so that's pretty much it. I think we went over all the gear, the mercenary, went over the stats and the skills. So now it is time for the demo portion. So this character is a beast. Um, let's demo him in some of his strongest areas here in player seven. We're in players, uh, we are in single player, so you can manipulate the player count is something you can do. You can also check it out here, player seven. All right, so the first thing you want to do before you farm anything at all, oh wow, well, um, oops. Looks like we need to move some things, okay. Dire wolves, I need more, okay. So, Oops, no, no, no. All right, make sure you set up all your hotkeys, of course. There's a lot of hotkeys on this build. Um, so ideally, there's definitely a lot of things you pay attention to, and it can be pretty I tough. Can't carry anymore. I actually think, now you know what, let's get Oak Sage on D. Let's get Dire Wolves there. Let's get, uh, let's see. You know what, let's get Volcano there. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot of things we can have. Okay, so there's a lot of one-pointers that are gonna really help you survive a ton on this build and whatnot. But first you wanna use Battle Command and Battle Orders. If you use Battle Command twice, you can boost the level of Battle Command once, which gives you one plus skill. And then you can literally start summoning all of your animals. Of course, you max out at five wolves, even with one point if you have plus skills, three dire wolves, a bear. And you can even get some ravens if you want. You don't need to get ravens, but raven lore boosts the level of ravens so much that um, the blind can help you out quite a bit. You don't have to, though. It's kind of optional. It's kind of like additional survivability you might not actually care about. Same thing with some of the wolves. Just kind of do what um, you feel comfortable with, and depending on your level of gear and how, much skill, how many skills you have in general. Oh yeah, you can bow all that, make sure you get Oak Sage out. Oak Sage is important for boosting your life. And as you can see, um, we have a lot of life. We have a lot of plus skills. So of course, you can teleport to our farming area. The Stony Tomb is in the Rocky Waste, and it has no fire in it. I'll show you guys how it works in Player 7. Okay. Very nice stuff. I think we're going to have to redo the hotkeys at the starter room, too. So, as you can see there, pretty crazy stuff, right? That's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage coming out. And that's just from Fissure. But see, now in patch 2.4, he can cast all of his abilities at once. Um, what I recommend doing normally is if you cast a Fissure, you can cast multiple boilers in between. So, Fissure lasts about, it lasts two seconds, and in between the Fissure casts, you can cast Molten Boulder. And that will further increase your DPS. So in Player 7, these monsters stand no chance. Um, if you lose any of, your, any of your animals or your spirit or whatnot, you can just cast it at any time. Instead of the Ravens, um, I just want to demo the Ravens. I'm actually going to put on Volcano. Not a big deal to actually do the Ravens. What are the Spirit Wolves? Spirit Wolves do give you some cold damage, though. So 
might want to actually not put them out, but it's kind of up to you. Remember how I said the cold damage can't slow down the monsters? Can. But, you know, as you can see, it's not a big deal if they're only slowing down one or two monsters here and there. They just keep you safer in general. There's a rare coordinate. There's a lot of elite packs in the Stony Tomb, so this is a very juicy area. This is a max level area where you can find any item in the game. And uh, you can absolutely wreck it in player 7. And you can see though, even though I take a lot of damage here, and you can also cast Volcano in between. Volcano is a good, like, you know, you can just set down a Volcano in the beginning if you wanted to as well, instead of starting with Fissure. I'd recommend just starting with Fissure though, and then kind of interweaving Molten Boulder and Volcano. And then uh, getting some Fire Storms in on the single targets. So these are all good AoE abilities. Uh, Molten Boulder is also good for single targets unless they're stationary, kind of like a boss. Bosses, uh, they can't run over them. Day. I think it's, I think it depends on the monster class. Like monsters that are a certain size, um, you can't knock them back and whatnot. So the boulder just runs into them and explodes. But the Molten Boulder will do a lot more damage against smaller monsters that it can kind of run over and pass over and knock back. So keep that in mind. A uh, volcano is very good if you place it directly on top of one target. Um, so if you put it on top of a single target like a boss, it will do damage until it expires. It's pretty good stuff. Um, so yeah, it shows all of the casting delays and whatnot here. So this is the two second casting delay on Fissure. Molten Boulder's got a one second casting delay, which is why if you fit a Molten Boulder in between two Fissures, it's usually about a second, which is really good stuff. And then, um, of course, uh, Volcano has, I think it's four seconds. And Armageddon, you can just keep recasting over and over. Okay, so there's definitely a lot of things you can cast. He's a very explosive build that you can explode everything with. But in general, like, Fissure is going to be your strongest against density clearing. And then if you interweave, like, Volcano or Boulder, you're going to get even more DPS into it. A uh, single target Firestorm is very strong. Molten Boulder and Volcano can also be good against single targets. And Armageddon is just good to have on at all times to increase your DPS. And the rest of these are here for support in terms of just mitigating damage done to you and otherwise. So yeah, it's really good stuff. Um, since the uh, freeze effect, the chill effect of the wolves in 2.4 isn't global, it won't really affect your figure's damage much, but if you don't like the spirit wolves, it's fine. Uh, just don't have Holy Freeze on your mercenary because then everything is frozen all the time. And uh, it's not just a minor brief chill effect we're talking. We're talking something that will affect your DPS over time. Alright, so that's a really strong area right there for this build. Um, you can also do the Mausoleum though. The Mausoleum is an 85 area that's a classic 85 area. Um, let me show that off real quick. Make sure your Armageddon is always casted, make sure you always revo, make sure you have all the summons out that you want to have out. And notice that these one point wonders are surviving very well. The summons are doing an extremely good job keeping us alive. Alright, found the burial grounds, which is on the edge, near the edge of the map somewhere. All the planes. You can use Firestorm. Can use Molten Boulder. I wouldn't recommend focusing too much on Fissure against bosses because bosses don't move too quickly through the Fissure typically. And uh, Fissure depends on the monsters moving through it so that they take damage ticks. So it's very important that you kind of like move the monsters into the Fissure. So like I can teleport away. If you use your mobility, you can lead the monsters into the Fissure into the Molten Boulder. And you can see here that Armageddon is hitting really hard. Like, Armageddon is hitting faster. It does more damage than ever. Like, Armageddon is insane now. Armageddon is just way more worth it now. Like, it's super responsive. You can always recast it at any time. Mausoleum has no fire immune, so once again, another max level area where you can clear the elites really good about doing it. Uh, the only thing about the mausoleum though is it lacks density, which is why I would personally prefer just to go Stony Tomb. Stony Tomb might be a little more dangerous, especially if you don't have lightning resistance. Hello. We got our lightning resistance on this build, so we are good to go. 
110 percent all right um you can always of course clear bosses with this build uh bosses like in Daryl are no problem firestorm will kill her in like two seconds boss is really good at dropping solid unique set rare items Can do this early on as well, just using a teleport staff. Show a bit of the starter variant, what he's good at. Alright, so as you can see here, it's pretty easy to kill her. Even in uh, max player count, that was player 7 there. No problem, this character has no shortage of damage. Um, literally go nuts with his damage. I should be using some more Volcano. I don't, sometimes I don't like interweaving Volcano though because by the time I use a Fissure and a Molten Boulder or a Fissure and a Firestorm or whatnot, usually I should be using another Fissure to uh, maximize that damage output. So it's all about interweaving your abilities and uh, getting used to the timings and whatnot for uh, maximum uh, super optimal gameplay. All right, so here's another area where um, a lot of builds, I wouldn't say, are super good at this area. This is not a max level area, but it's super dense. And if you have infinity um, on this build, you can take advantage of the density and the fact that there's ghosts that don't drop armor and weapon items and drop only charms, jewels, gems, and the most important thing, uh, runes, and of course, jewelry. Runes, though, you can get high runes in here, jaw runes, bird runes, and if you farm in higher player count, it's even more likely. Um, let's refresh our Armageddon. Go in here. Fissure. Oops. Fumbling my hotkeys. Anyway, okay. So this is where if I cast like a volcano, it'd be a pretty good idea. You can see that this character, even in the highest player count, doesn't fear anything in here. And of course, monsters like this just take down with Firestorm, Volcano, Molten Boulder. You're left with a single target straggler at the end. These are fire immune skellies here, and they just get absolutely murdered um, by his ability. So he's just a ton of fun, like he's just a firecracker, he's super strong. You can see why he's among the strongest density players in the game. We're in the highest player count, taking down high HP monsters, even fire enemies like they're nothing. And you could get even more negative enemy fire rates once again if you put facets in your weapon, if you don't want as much faster cast rate. And you have even less issues with fire enemies, which can be really good in ancient tunnels. Stack more MF if you're just farming like one area and it's close by the waypoint like in a single player. But yeah, it's really good stuff. There's no, I don't think we've seen ghosts yet. Look how devastating though Armageddon is now, it's no joke. Um, I would say before this patch I would have never recommended like maxing Armageddon only one point. You can see me constantly switching my abilities. I can switch between all of the fire abilities. All of them can be worth using now. Every single one. But yeah. Let's see if we can find like a different uh, tomb here kind of set up and then we'll demo that as well. But yeah, I mean. Damage is just insane. Notice I'm pretty much trying to cast Fissure off cooldown. Fissure is definitely your biggest source of DPS at all times. And then Infinity is just dropping their immunity, moving immunities, dropping their fire res, more negative fire res in here. Fire remains also don't stand much of a chance against Armageddon, Volcano, and Molten Boulder. Remember if you're dealing with fire remains don't have quite as much damage uh, to make a lot more use of your physical damage abilities. Uh, 
looks like our bow ran out. We can always uh, re weapon swap the bow, get back to it. Yeah, I don't think we found any apparitions, but there's so much density in there that it can be really good to farm things, and you can still farm some of the rarest items in the game in there. So, it's not a joke. Alright, so now let's, um... Let's do another area that I'd say a lot of people would um, skip on most builds and whatnot, but once again, super good for density clearing. Um, unfortunately, the flares in some of the max level areas are fire immune, which might slow you down a bit, but you can still do them. Um, if you want to do it earlier on, though, especially with like a starter build, um, of course, you can also just go to here. Notice how my wolves haven't died yet. And once again, this is player 7, which is one point to the wolves. To the bear. It's really shielding me from taking a lot of extra damage. So all those buffs to summons, allowing you to uh, fuel them all at the same time, are also big buffs to the other group. Yeah, definitely. So you see this here? Look how effective Molten Boulder is at destroying fire moves, even in max player that. Now, it depends on their health, of course, and their physical immunity, because... but... it's just hard to ignore how much damage that does. I don't think we really got a good pack of players in this one, did we? Well... That's okay. Anyway, Fissure's just absurd at destroying the flares, so... Oh, we might be able to show that better with the starter build as well. Starter setup. Um, so, there are some areas that might be a little bit tougher on this build, like Travancore, because you can't really break the fire, it means it's just, uh, Infinity. I'd probably avoid those kinds of areas, but, you know, you could definitely do it with the physical damage and the fire damage. They are doable. Um, it's just Torque is also, like, fire, um, and physical resistant, so he's fire immune and physical resistant, so. In those situations against physical and fire immune monsters, or highly resistant ones, I would just skip them. And I probably wouldn't farm those areas just because um, they're trouble. They're definitely trouble. Now in patch 2.4, besides the Stony Tomb, there's another new 85 area on the block that you might want to check out on a mostly fire build. Which is the sewers. Now the sewers, depending on where you enter the sewers, that's where most of the elite packs will spawn. So you don't usually want to do the whole sewer, you just usually want to kind of look around the initial spawn area. You'll notice that's where most of these elite packs are. They're like right around the initial spawn area. Notice though, I could use just Molten Boulder in a lot of cases depending on the damage. So we got some uh... got some uh, bats there some champions I would I, I wouldn't I wouldn't stray too far away though from your initial spawn point though because the farther you go away from it the less likely you are to encounter elites however we are getting some elites out here too so that's kind of nice doesn't always happen reliably though but I wouldn't go all the way in that opposite corner for instance I'd kind of stick around this like general corner area. Okay. That's pretty much it. We killed a bunch of elites in the sewers, and there you have it. They can drop any item in the game. No fire immunes, at least as long as they're not uniques. Uniques can always spawn stats that can make them fire immune, but there's no native fire immunes in that area as well. Native being the keyword. Alright, of course you can also just kill Mephisto. This character can do so many farming areas insanely effectively, um, even without this level of gear, especially if you're just playing solo. Once again, this is a max or a near max player count demo. Player 7 is the maximum player count that affects whether a monster can drop an item or not. Not the quality of the item, but whether they just drop an item at all. These are not fire immune, they're lightning immune, so you can definitely clear these council members. See, I wouldn't recommend doing Travancore. Okay. And then of course you can go Firestorm. 
use Volcano. I would use Firestorm and Volcano on bosses, honestly. That's what I do. Damn. Flattened. Excellent stuff. Excellent, excellent stuff. GG. Very good stuff indeed. And then you just flat him. Easy mode. Yeah, Firestorm is just so effective against bosses. It has such a low uh, cooldown slash casting delay. Just keep in mind they all they call the cooldown casting delay, but I also use the word cooldown interchangeably. Um, it is a cooldown. You can't. It, you have to wait for the cooldown to complete until you can use another instance of that skill. But you can use another skill in the space of that cooldown, though. That was not the case before on this build. Once again, there were global cooldowns before on the Fire Druid. Uh, now they are not. So now you can, is, once uh, if it once Fissure is on to cooldown for two seconds, in the span of that two seconds, you can cast other abilities. So that's why it's very important to keep chaining your abilities as much as possible. All right, so this is now Act 4. Um, so in Act 4, I wouldn't recommend farming much of Act 4, especially not on the standard build. But let's say that you want to farm Chaos, and you just really want to farm Chaos. I wouldn't recommend doing it in high player count. Let's ID these real quick. Let's see if we got any good circlets. Probably not. I wonder if the people on YouTube would kill me if I didn't ID my items. I feel like they do sometimes. They'll, they'll, they'll crucify me. They'll crucify me! It's like, why don't you ID your items? It's a demo. It's a demo. Alright, so, yeah, for some reason in the new patch, you can't just, like, switch out your items easily. Put that to good use. I think you used to be able to do this, I don't know. Alright, so, instead, let's say we want to farm Players 1 or Players 3 Chaos, we can. I'll put that to good use. Um, this character can actually do it very effectively, too, especially if you have a Reaper's Toll. So this build isn't focusing, um... If we swap these out on the mercenary, now we're not really focusing on our fire damage so much, we're focusing more on the physical damage. And ideally on this build, which is on max roll under the uh, physical damage build variant, um, you would get plus skills and you wouldn't focus on negative enemy fire res at all. The more plus skills you have, the faster you can clear chaos and faster and higher player, uh, not faster player counts, higher player counts, um, you can clear it as well. So the mercenary now has a reaper's toll, so you can go players one, and I'll show you clearing him clearing chaos in players one. Even without focusing plus skills here, you can get more plus skills, you can use spirit, you can even get upwards of 163 FCR and do this as well. I'm not going to swap out all that gear, but just to let you know that if you really want to focus hard on the physical damage of Armageddon, Bold Boulder, and Volcano, uh, you can. So, look at this damage. Look at the Venom Lord just get crushed. You're going bowling. So as you can see, uh, this is not just a pure fire. Unlike a fire sorceress, it's pretty much literally can't do this area without a pure fire sorceress will encounter all kinds of constraints. Uh, a lot of other builds, like even a holy fire paladin, are going to find a lot more issues in here. But this build? No siree. Maintain your Armageddon, that is doing your physical damage. Notice I'm only using my physical damage abilities now in here. I could switch to using Fissure against the uh, Stormcasters, so I can still use Fissure against those. The rest of the monsters in Chaos, though, are fire -themed. So, we're not going to want to do that. But you can see, though, that in Players 1, they are dying instantly. Which means you can even do this area in Players 3 pretty comfortably. He will kind of still struggle in Players 8, but you can still kill them, and it's still possible. It's just going to take a bit longer. The Reaper's Toll, though, is being used for the negative energy um, physical res, and if you get as much attack speed on your mercenary, if you're using Treachery instead of Fort, and attack speed in your health, 
There's a G face to get more physical damage on the mercenary as well. The mercenary is doing a ton of physical damage, and he's lowering all of their physical damage. So all the physical damage on her abilities is good. You're gonna want to tilly stomp the monsters so that the physical damage is proccing. And normally you're gonna want to lead with a Hulk Boulder. Uh, you can also lead with a Volcano though. Volcano is definitely gonna add some extra damage every four seconds so you can cast one of those. But there is a pretty large casting delay on that. Just keep that in mind. But yeah, and it, this is an area I think a lot of people would just write off as, oh no, there's no way you're doing this on a fire grid. Well, you could. Even without as much gear, players one, it at least becomes somewhat possible. Oh no. But notice, notice this, so he was physical immune. Take a look at that, guys. Chat and YouTube and everyone else. The decrep from the Reaper's Toll can break physical immunity. So even in Factor of Souls, even if he's physical immune, will go down from this version of the Fire Druid with physical and fire immunity. So that is how strong this approach can be. Um, of course, um, once you get to this point, though, you just use Firestorm, Players 1 Diablo. Kind of a joke. Okay, sweet. GG. He's not the greatest boss killer, though. It's not like he's the fastest boss killer in the universe, but he's not bad. So, you know, as long as you use Firestorm, Volcano, uh, maybe Molten Boulder against Elites, but not like any really big monsters like bosses, Molten Boulder is not very effective against, so I wouldn't recommend adding that into your rotation once again. Yeah. Okay. So, hello. What do we got here? Pretty good. So as you can see, he's definitely uh, he can definitely make that work, and that's probably the best demonstration of the physical damage uh, build variant's power is doing that. So he really isn't afraid of anything. Um, he can blow up anything, uh, low high player count, and in low lower player counts, and even. In, in higher player counts, to some extent, um, the physical damage can still shine through and uh, give you an absurd amount of damage in Chaos, so that's really cool stuff. You can even use a Static Field Mercenary too if you don't want to rely as much on Conviction, and Static Field is really good um, for increasing your damage earlier on too, maybe, but Static Field's not very reliable, so keep that in mind. Um, and uh, he really is only really good if you have mobility. So you really need Enigma to make a Static Field Mercenary good on a Druid. Otherwise, it's just going to be a lot of problems. It's going to die a lot. And he's not going to cast it. But you can always use Static Field as well. So the Act 3 Static Field Mercenary is also a very solid approach here. All right. Um, let's go over some of the more simple areas in Act 5. Um, should be going back to Player 7, but... Eldritch and Shank would die on any player account, pretty much unless it doesn't matter what. Remember to recast your Armageddon, your battle orders, your summons, as needed. I'm not bothering with Ravens, but you can definitely go the Ravens early on. Eh, F it. Unless it's like a really golly item, I'm just gonna leave it on the ground. That might be a 5 meter though, I just left it on the ground. Maybe five fissure built. Two sockets, and you can put fire passes in it. You'll never know. You'll never know, man. Never know. Alright, anyway, so you can do that. Eldritch Shank, that's pretty easy to do. Uh, you can do Pendle. Pendle has a lot of fire resistance, though, so I wouldn't say doing Pendle is like the best thing you can do on the build. You can do it. One thing that's pretty underrated on this build is clearing out ice caves, especially on the way to like Drifter or Icy Cavern. Icy, Ca uh, Icy Cellar actually is a new level 85 area with no fire immunes at all. You usually don't get fire immunes in Drifter Cavern, which is also a new 85 area. Um, so let's show those areas real quick. You can also get ghosts in here so you can farm them through runes. Fire builds have always been good at clearing out these ice caves, but these ice caves are only 82, level 83, so they're not, these like walkway areas are decent, they're not going to be like insane or anything. 
for Cap. That's that's frozen that's frozen river there. You can also do frozen river as well. That's why we teleport over here. I also just showing you guys the uh, ice cave. There's not a lot of fire. I don't. I think there might be one fire immune enemy in the frozen river. I don't remember. I think so. Frozen river is only an 83 area though. In general, fire damage really clears out these ice caves really well, so you can definitely hit that up. Let's go to the Drifter Cavern now. Remember, you can recast Armageddon at any time now because it won't prevent you from casting other abilities. Yeah, Fire Druge is really effing strong now. Wow. Really strong in the late game. This is. The strongest druid build now in the late game, hands down. He just blows up things faster than even a wind druid. A lot of people might not be able to believe it before watching this video, but it is true. We're reading the guide. Drifter Cavern doesn't usually have, there's only one fire I mean that can spawn here. Um, that's good shit. Okay, got that through that one. All right. Yeah. Yeah. See these big monsters, the Molten Boulder just runs into them, so you can't really use it against them. Um, monsters in Diablo 2 have different size classifications and that um, helps determine what Molten Boulder does. Molten Boulder uh, it's good when it passes through a monster or knocks it back constantly, and not when it just explodes into it. So, something to keep in mind. Molten Bowler will just smash into them and then not work properly all the time, which is really good stuff, but that's just how it works. Alright, and then of course, Icy Cellar, which I would say is probably one of his best farming areas, with having high physical and fire damage. Not a lot of physical resistance in there, there's no fire immunity. Um, it can be pretty dangerous though, so I'd recommend maybe having your sustain from Phoenix and having max light res. At the very least, if not T Gods, before you do it. You don't need T Gods though, because you do have a lot of fire res. As you can see though, Fissure mostly does most of the work. But against this fire immune that doesn't break from infinity, we're still killing it with all that physical damage from Molten Boulder. The damage on this character is pretty raunchy. Okay, it's disgusting. So as you can see, Icy Cellar can be dangerous, but it can have Gloams, it can have Ghosts, a lot of monsters dropping hybrids in here. Once again, we are back in player 7. This is max player count. He is rushing. Combination of all these skills. He's just smashing it up, dude. Smashing it up. No problem. That's another max level area that's chock full of elite packs, so definitely check that one out. For sure. For sure. Alright, so then there's another thing we're going to want to do here. Yeah, I, I've always loved this build, by the way, even before they buffed it. Um, even with the global cooldowns, but now it's just, it's just so much fun. So much fun chaining all these abilities. Um... Of course, you can key farm with a fire damage build. You can do Countess. You can do Summoner. Um, and you can do Millifloc. You have, uh, if you have Phoenix, you can redeem the corpses on Nilly, and then he doesn't. Um, he can't kill you with the corpse explosions quite as easily. There's less monsters you can use the corpse explosion with. Not quite as effective as Nature's Peace, but pretty effective. As you can see though, Fissure's not good against the stationary monsters, but the Molten Boulder can pass right through him. You can also, of course, kill him with Firestorm. He dies very fast from Firestorm. Firestorm is insanely strong versus a single target. But there's just so many options, man, and they're all very effective. Very effective options indeed. Alright, and then of course... Last but not least, World Stem Keep Farming and Bale. Yes, if you have a lower resist wand, we can get past Bale and even clear wave 5. Um, we'll be doing that here momentarily. 
then we'll be demoing, like, we'll do a couple of, like, players 3, players 1 demos. And then I'm going to show the starter build and what the starter build is capable of. That will be the end of the guide. Alright, so you can clear pretty much all of World Stone. Um, there can be some nasty fire means though, like these ones right here. You can't even knock them down with molten boulders, so they are problematic for sure. Um, Death Lords are definitely a problem, especially in player 7. We're still able to kill them somewhat. But yeah, those, the, you get Death Lords, I won't lie. Um, it's gonna be a little tougher. Wow, we're getting some nasty mobs, okay. Build to the test, huh? Um, uh, where's our oak stage? Okay, there it is. There's a small charm grip. I don't really want to pick those up. See, as you can see, I can clear them with boulder and volcano and Armageddon, but it's really tough. And obviously, the mercenary damage is really helping a lot here. Pretty much doing most of the work right now. If I could knock him down with Molten Boulder, it would help a ton, but I can't, so. And they're, they're also very physical resistant, too. Highly physical resistant to Death Lords, so they're, they're very hard to kill. Anyway. Can use Molten Boulder against that monster, it passes through just fine. So we can use, we can bow ourselves here. Now, what we're gonna wanna do now, we're gonna want to uh, change out our, uh, should have done this before anyway. But we can cast lower resistance on the Bailways if we wanted to. And they get destroyed even more. Now this is gonna be very important for wave four and wave five because wave four has a lot of fire resistance and wave five is fire immune. So if we want to clear Bailways in high player count with this build, um, we're definitely going to want to do that, for sure. Cast that, start casting Fitter, and then bam. Done without much of a second look. Alright, we'll do wave 4 now, then wave 5. We'll do wave 4 in high player count. I think we're gonna try wave. We'll do wave five and high player count. It is pretty tough to do high player count wave five though. It shouldn't be too bad though. As you can see though, uh, with a combination of conviction and lower res though, volcano is really good in situations like this when you hit a fire immune single target that you can't kill. Oh man. No, not the Death Lords. Okay. Yeah, we actually got pretty unlucky with this spawn. There aren't always Death Lords in here, thankfully. It's okay though. So we're gonna go do lower resist here. Then, as you can see here, between all the damage that we can do. Try to lead them through the fitter if you can. Make sure the lower resist stays on them. And as you can see, even in player 7, we're still doing damage against extremely strong fire resistant monsters. Which is kind of nuts. If you think about it. In players 1, we can basically vaporize them like this. I think I'll demo there. I can just keep leading them through if possible. Of course, you can always just lead them outside and not bother with any of this, but I think this is a testament to this build's power. The fact that all the physical damage, too, is going to help you along the way. Make sure you're casting the physical damage, too. It definitely helps. So, yeah, it's not just a fire damage build. You can even clear wave 5 and max player count. It's just going to take a while. Now against Bale, you never want to do them in max player count. Um, let's do them in players 3, why not? And uh, 
can use lower resist on him too if you have it in the cube. And then use a combination of Volcano and Firestorm. Oh shit, what am I doing? Ah! Swap my. There you have it. See, he's not the fastest boss killer, but he does the job. There you have it there. He can do it all. He uh, he has no problems in the late game, especially once you acquire, like I said, all of this gear here. You get all that negative enemy fire res, you get a lot of plus skills, and you get conviction aura. Um, pretty much can do whatever you want. You can farm that one there from Drognan, that lower resist wand. Um, so, pretty OP stuff. All right, let's do a couple of uh, lower player account demos as well. Hello. I can show you guys that you can just like vaporize everything. Super easy. Um, let's also do cows as well. Cows is one of his very best farming areas. As a matter of fact, before we go into the lower player account demos, let's do a high player account demo. Uh, this character is a well-known Density Destroyer. And I don't think um, it can fully do him justice. Unless we get... Um, unless we do cows. So there's no Cyclone Armor. In the, in the past, you would have one point Cyclone Armor because you needed it for Armageddon. Um, you don't anymore, which is pretty awesome. It saves a lot of skill points as well. So on top of the global cooldowns, the improvements to Armageddon, and uh, increasing the physical damage of his physical damage abilities, um, he also doesn't have to put extra points into any of the wind skills. Um, and the wind skills, the one point, really didn't help him. Uh, they didn't last enough time. They are clunky. So it's really good now that you don't have to do that. All right, so let's do max player count. Let's go player seven here. Let's go clear cows. Good day. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it, baby. All right, cows here. Cows are getting absolutely destroyed in player seven. Once again, which is the max player count for drops. Players, they would be the max for experience. Get, um, you get, ex you get more experience from monsters in every additional player count. Monsters are also a lot harder, more health, more damage, etc. Um, but when it comes to odd player counts, odd player counts, 1, 3, 5, and 7 increase the drops. Right there, that was just Fissure, so now we can find Fissure, get on our, put on our arm and get it. We can just jump into the cows and have a Have a good time. And even fire remains can go down. Once again, try to lead the monsters into the fissure if you can. Put the fissure in front of you. So the monsters walk into the fissure and die. You can see though, this is no joke. Um, I wouldn't say this is as fast as maybe like a necromancer or a light freeze on, but it's really close. In terms of clearing player seven cows. And you have really high sustain and you can just like go around. Just absolute absurd damage going on in here. Move! Move! Whoa! Oh. So yeah, he was going crazy. Oh, look at that, I found a T-Gods too. Perfect. That's a Fender God's Vigor. See, we can cast the volcanoes in between. Keep chaining the abilities. Absolute crazy damage and oh, crazy, crazy damage. All right. Um. So yeah, let's do a couple of uh, a couple more like uh, I'll do like a player's three pit. Let's see here. I think you guys get the idea here though. Move on. 
allow a, a sacred armor in cows, that's uh that's pretty rare. It's a uh, highest treasure class base item. Greetings. Doesn't usually drop in cows. Cows is an 81 area, and because it's so dense, it's so good at dropping charms, jewels, gems, and jewelry, just like kind of high density in general. Just like the ghosts and tombs, Icy Cellar is going to be good for that on this character. Uh, flares are going to be really good. You could even farm the halls in this character, but um, you do get fire I mean flares, so you might want to keep that in mind. Alright, um, so the next thing we're going to want to do here, yeah, let's do the pit. So the pit has fire I means, but because we have so much physical damage on the rest of our abilities, um, and the fire I means in there have such low HP, it doesn't really matter. You could even do this area on highest player account, but players three, you can really just see that you can just pull down even an area where once again a pure fire build would typically not want to enter. Um, hopefully this inspires people to want to play this character. Uh, it's just such a beast. Definitely. Definitely a beast. Uh, damn. So you can see here all the fire means and stuff, it doesn't really matter. You just use a combination of your of your Armageddon, your uh, just everything. Notice though we can't break the fire means, but it doesn't matter. Not even in the slightest. We can still clear all of these fire enemies of Volcano, all the Boulder. Let's clear them all the abilities. This is just how strong you can get, it's just nuts. Alright, so let's, let's see here. I guess we'll enter, uh, do some of that here too. Let's go into, uh, let's go into Pit 2 real quick here. And, uh, we'll be set. Once again, normally you really wouldn't want to mess with this, but... Look at that fire in me just getting blasted. Nothing. Molten Bowler's just too good at that, man. It's too good. And normally you want to clear all the elites. The pit is still one of the best farming areas in the game. Very dense, low HP monsters. Um, for a fire druid, I wouldn't recommend doing it until you have like a high level of gear like this character here. Um, but you can still do it, and that kind of just shows you that you know. Um, it's it's also flush with elites, you know. It's a max level area, but that just shows you just how strong this character is, and how um, he's really capable of pretty much anything. Um, we can do a couple of areas in players one as well here. Hello. To show you, you know, honestly, he's one-shotting a lot of things in player seven uh, with this level of gear, which is why in players one you might want to focus some more. Um, what you need? I want to focus more on your uh, MF, so it's possible you can swap out some damage charms for MF uh, if you want to. Yeah, that's always an option, though. All right, so. Sure spawn all your summons under plus skill swap wherever you have the most plus skills. I think in this case it's either one for me, so it doesn't really matter. And bow. Player's one. Look at Armageddon destroying those fire resistant monsters. It's crazy. <laughs> this is player's one, so honestly, you don't even have to worry about fire immunity. Player's one. It's like totally irrelevant. Even Armin get it to the same amount. I don't even have to use Fidger, I can just pull them down with a molten boulder and you're good to go. Um, that's why I recommend primarily focusing molten boulder on the players one elite sniping approach for 163 FCR on the max rule guide. Um, because you don't really need Fidger for that. Uh, that's how strong this build gets, especially if you get more plus skills, it's just really easy to do. It's really easy to really easy to frame. Now you can go. Um, let's see here. Let's just let's just do another bail run here in players three, in players one. This character is such absurd overkill in players one. It's crazy. 
all you can do is play by yourself. You can't manipulate the player account like on single player using the backslash player skill. I always do that. One thing that I really like about patch 2.42 is that now in single player, your player account will stick. So if you set it, it will stick and it will be that player account on that character until you change it. So you no longer have to reset it every game, so that's really cool. And uh really good stuff this is done. You can see though, these fire remains don't stand a chance. They just melt. Players one especially, it's just super easy. That whole area was almost fire immune, didn't matter. Okay, so Armageddon definitely doing a lot more here. Because now we're in players one, but you can still see that these are still trouble. <laughs> Even in players one. I think that monster might be the toughest monster for this build to deal with in the whole game. So, uh, yeah. Just, you can't knock him down with Bold Boulder, you can't knock him back. Um, yeah, it's just trouble. No matter, no matter how you... No matter how you, no matter how you, uh, how you swing it. No matter how you swing it, it's trouble. You can see though that like in players one just everything just vaporizes. Pretty crazy stuff. Of course, most builds can do this when they have max gear, to be fair. But I also want to show you just a total meltation. Show you guys just a total meltation of Wave 5, especially um, Players 1. Now, Bay will even melt in Players 1, too, so. No problems here. Wave 4 doesn't even cause any issues at all. There you go. I always get more hotkeys too. I have like a certain set of like 10 or 11 hotkeys I like to use, so. Pretty good stuff. Wait, what? Wait, what's going on here? It's not pressing that button. Oh, I put it on. Oh, okay. Oops. Well, whatever. Doesn't really matter too much. Lower res, breaks the fire immunity with a combination of conviction. Blam, blam, blam. Look how fast they die. Oh wow. Okay, he's fire immune with that. Oh no, no, he did not. He just lost his fire. He just lost his, uh, lost his immunity. I mean, he lost his lower res. Alright, sweet. Then you just kill Bale one more time on players one here, and then we're gonna show you guys the starter version of the build and what he's capable of. Show you guys in some areas you can do even without a lot of gears. So in case you have like no gear at all, which is likely to be the case at the start of ladder. There you go. Damn. Okay. Very nice. Alright, so that's the standard build. Um, we also showed him, of course, putting on the Reaper's Toll to clear the physical immunes. Kind of showed you guys, you know, just how much physical damage these uh, supposed fire abilities are. He is a fire druid, but he's also a physical druid. He's a smasher. He just does so much damage. Um, crazy A tier density clear. Alright, let's get into. The starter build. So before we do anything on the starter build, let's kind of show off the difference between the other character's gear and this character's gear. Um, we still have the same mercenary. He's giving us insight though, uh, so he's giving us some mana regen, and he's got some life leech, and he's got some res, so he can survive. Um, honestly, this insight thresher is honestly like too good, but 
The higher damage insight you can get, the better and the more he's able to survive. And then, um, of course, we also have here, we have our Spirit Crystal Sword, Lore. These are very basic items you can get by uh, just literally uh, running through the Druid Leveling Guide on Maxwell. Uh, Ancient's Pledge. You can use Rhyme too if you really hate being frozen. Um, smoke. Just some plus skills, whatever skills you can get. Maybe some MF, maybe some res. Teleport staff. If you can get a Mage Fist, awesome. If not, res. Res. Uh, this definitely is a pretty nice boots, but you know, the res isn't too ridiculous. You can definitely get some nice dual res boots that have about the same amount of res. Uh, life, res, MF, MF, and smoke, which is just an F lump. Nightmare Countess, Nightmare Cow Farming, any of that stuff will give you all of these items, no problem at all. Um, and then of course, a couple of extra plus skills might help out a little bit with some of this stuff, but you honestly don't even need, honestly, this level 100%. This level is pretty comfortable though, it's pretty comfy. Um, usually you want it to be pretty comfy if possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to re-hotkey this build here real quick. Uh, get us everything we want here. Hey, okay, what's going on here? That should be it. Okay. Weird. All right, um, I'm actually not gonna use spirit wolves because I don't have as much mobility. So it might be good to avoid the extra cold damage on them so they can run through the fissures easier. And blam, 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 blam. Um, pretty much got everything we want. So the most obvious thing you can do, even in hell, nightmare, you can do the hell areas, you can do the nightmare areas in players one. We should still be in players one, I hope we are. Um, you can see even with this amount of plus skills, you can still get a decent amount of dire wolves. Um, still get your bear. You still get your spirit. And then you can just use fitter. And if you want to use any mobility, if you want to let, like lead them into the fitter a bit, you can. Still doing a pretty decent amount of chunk of damage there uh, using your bolt holder. You can also use a harmony on weapon swap to run around faster on a really cheap version of this build. And it's still very effective. So yeah, this is really good stuff. Of course, you can do shank pretty easily. I wouldn't really recommend Pendle too much. You can use a lower resist one to break his fire immunity though, and you can kill him too. Even. Monsters are so loud, dude. Got a lot of magic resistance, wow. Okay. Nice. So yeah, it takes a little bit longer to kill things, but... Or a lot longer, but you can definitely farm on a much weaker version of this build. Um, another area I guess we can show off is the Stony Tomb. That's going to be good for a starter build, for sure. Um, there's going to be some other areas that are decent, too, but the Stony Tomb has no fire remains. It's pretty easy. You can do the Mausoleum. And then I'm also going to show cows, and that's going to be it, I think, here. Oh, yeah, we got pretty lucky here. Nice spawn. Very good. Remember to keep up all your summons. Notice the Stony Tomb's no problem. And if being frozen like this annoys you, you can use thawing potions, you can, like I said, you can use a Rhyme. Rhyme gives more MF, but then your res might suffer quite a bit more. Having some res, I think, is pretty important for uh, Stony Tomb farming, especially light res. So it kind of just depends on where you want to farm, but... Notice the summons are actually dying because we have a lot less plus skills, so... Might need to, you might need to resummon them a bit more, but we're still blowing up lots of elites in a max level area. So we can still find any item in the game in here. Players won. And our level of gear is like absolutely abysmal compared to the uh, standard version. 
Well, it's pretty much still the same concept as the other one. Um, the abilities might not last as long. Cooldowns are still the same though, so you can still chain your abilities just the same way. We're gonna do Players 1 Cows as well, and then that should be it. Or the demo, and the Fissure Fire Druid Guide, whatever you wanna call it. Those animals are definitely gonna tank for you really nicely, so... You don't need quite as much sustain as Phoenix. Even without all that Phoenix sustain and everything, this build is still very effective. You can just run him through here very easily. Okay. Fidger is just so strong. You could even do like P3 pretty decently in here, honestly, because the monsters don't have a lot of HP in the Stony Tomb. Which kind of like the pit for the builds that are really good at doing the pit with no gear. Um, it's a very similar advantage. This Oak Sage doesn't have like any life at all, but just keeping it up is just another distraction and temporarily boost your life. Now on the cow level, you might actually not even care about your summons or your mercenary. That shit might just die instantly. So on the cow level, it's a little bit different. I'll show you how that kind of works here. Good day. And uh, GG stuff. Let's go find it, baby. Let's go find it! Alright, so yeah, he's th these are all fire immune. Big whoop. So yeah, he can even do hell cows with this level of gear, which is pretty nuts. Um, nightmare cows are definitely going to be a lot easier. But... You can, and it doesn't feel too bad. Doing hell cows in players one is definitely a bit of a challenge. But you can always make it work. All right. Good day. Sweet. All right. Wow, right on top of the cow king. Not ideal. But as you can see here, though, how they're gonna die. Honestly, I don't even think you would use summons in here because you want the monsters to run through the fissure. So the mercenary, you can even let him die. It's not a big deal. And then farm this area for charms, jewels, gems, runes, and socket bases very early on in the game. Put on, I wouldn't put on your uh, armor get it though. Now the key to doing this really effectively on an early game Fissure Druid is to get monsters clumped up as much as possible. The more they run through the Fissure, the more they clump up, the more effective Fissure is. And that's always going to be the case. So... Fissure is just going to do all your damage in here, pretty much. You can use Volcano here and there, off the cooldown. As you can see here, we are clearing the cows with abysmal gear. We have plus three all skills on those. And we have level 30-ish on the Molten Boulder. Our damage is not nearly as high as it was on the other version, which is hitting over 5k. Uh, fissure and whatnot, and negative enemy fire is. Um, 4.5 to 5.5 is pretty much where the standard build sits, but this one... Nearly as much damage, no negative enemy fire as at all. It's still crushing. You can use volcanoes in between. You can also use molten boulders too. You can always check the gear after you run around in a circle. But yeah, he is a beast. For sure. And yeah, you can do that.
No problem. Players 1, solo gameplay. No problem. So as you can see, um, you can play him as a starter. You can play him as a god tier fire build. You can destroy fire remains with him. Um, heck, you can do anything. I can even destroy ancient tunnels. Ancient tunnels is like one of the better uh, enough areas in single player if you can get a waypoint next to the tunnels. And clear the fire remains in high player account with a lot of negative enemy res. But at least in players 1 and players 3 very easily uh, without a lot of negative enemy res. And you can kind of do it all. That's it for the Fire Druid Guide, though. Uh, you can check the timestamps for all the sections of this guide below in the first pinned comment and in the description. Uh, you can check out the full written guide at d2.maxwell.gg forward slash guides forward slash fissure dash druid. Um, really beastly build. Uh, he, the fissure druid is the strongest um, druid build as in the late game period. So it's the strongest late game druid. It's also the strongest for starting out with damage in the very beginning. Um, as a, I'd say the support builds a bit of a stronger approach early ladder, especially in a team overall than the Fissure Druid as a farming build early ladder, but it's still very, very, very strong. Of course, you can check out all of the tier lists on Maxwell as well for overall late game and early game strength. Um, of course, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe below. You can always check me out at twitch.tv forward slash dark humility for six to seven days a week of Diablo 2 action. And of course, during the D2R ladder, we'll be playing hardcore, going super hard, trying to go to 99 on a sorceress. You can catch us there for that April 28th, first D2R ladder with patch 2.4 and all the new rune words. Um, it is going to be a ton of fun. But yeah, I hope you guys love this build. He is a, he's just a bomb, dude. Just blows up everything. Crazy, crazy, crazy fun stuff. Um, and yeah, it's real, really crazy. OP, hell is strong. Remember, you can always catch the rest of my build guides on Maxwell and on YouTube as well. And I will see you guys next time for the next guide. Check you out. Check it out. Check it out. Check out through. All right. Check it out later, baby. Dark Humility, over and out. See you guys next time. Smashy.